Welcome to Fredericksburg Mission, a podcast talking all things mental health and wellness in the Berg. Brought to you by... How do you shorten the time it takes to buy a car? Car buying just got easier. Pohanka365.com lets you complete as much or as little of the car buying process online. Pohanka365.com. Car buying simplified. Anytime, anywhere. Welcome to Fredericksburg Mission Podcast. My name is Angela Rivers, and today I am here with Katie Solvig, Resource Parent Recruiter for UMFS. Thank you, Katie, for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, of course. It's so nice to have you on. Um, I really enjoyed getting to know you uh, as a coworker and as a friend. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> So I'd love to begin this podcast by telling our listeners your journey to UMFS. Okay, sure. Um, so let's see where to kind of begin. Um, so I graduated with my um, undergrad degree in psychology about a year ago. Um, and at the time I was, you know, just looking for a job that was in the helping world. I just wanted to be um, giving back to the community and doing something that was having to do with psychology, mental health, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so UMFS was hiring for a recruiter at the time, and I started looking into the organization. Um, and one thing that was really important for me in a place that I work is just the culture and the environment of that organization. And I really found that I personally um, identified with a lot of the core values that UMFS has. And so I reached out and applied, and that's kind of how my journey began. And I've never looked back. <laughs> yeah. And how long have you been with the organization? Um, just over a year now. Yeah, I think it was a year in January. Yeah. And have you learned anything about yourself since you began? I've learned a lot about myself. <laughs> I think that it's been very enlightening for um, just being, you know, it's my first like really professional job um, after college. Um, so learning a lot just about working with different people, collaborating, um, how to build relationships, um, how to even just organization skills, um, different things like that. And I feel like as an organization, UMFS has really poured into me and done, given me a lot of training and equipped me um, in just a lot of ways that I wouldn't expect just coming into this role. Um, and that's been really cool to feel like I'm getting poured into as an individual. Yeah, definitely. I love that about our organization. I, I feel that they yeah. truly help each individual grow and, and thrive in their role. Um, it's one they of the do. things that drew me as well. And I'm just loving it. Yeah, they really do. It's nice to know that when they see potential and they see strengths, they lean into those and they really empower all of their employees and also like the families that we have. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, as a recruiter myself, people often ask me, you know, what do we do? You know, and what I yes. love about, you know, yeah. And what I love about, you know, being a recruiter is each of the recruiters at UMFS, we each have a slightly different role, but with one big similar mission. So what exactly do you do in your role at UMFS? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I always say we kind of do a little bit of everything, you know. Um, like you said, we're um, out and about in the community. We're making connections. Um, we're building relationships. We're answering questions. We're talking to families who are interested in becoming foster families with us and helping them start that journey. Um, and then within that role, I also manage our social media pages. Um, so each region has their own page that we post on. We share resources, um, share about mental health, share about the need in our communities, um, just general information about foster care, and then also things about UMFS itself. Yeah, definitely. And how yeah, big is the need? It's really big. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I don't think people ever, you know, I mean, the goal, we, would, we don't want the need to be there, um, of course, but it is there. Um, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of the need just within their community. Um, and of course, that ebbs and flows. But 
we can only take as many kids into our program as we have homes available. And right now we need more homes. Um, we're having to deny a lot of kids because we don't have those homes available. Um, so our program is growing. Our families are really strong. The ones who are coming in, they're doing a great job at creating relationships with these kids and limiting um, disruptions. And we see from you know our stats that our families are really happy, our kids are happy, um, but we just wanna be able to expand that um, by having more families join us. Yeah, definitely. You know, not all, not everyone always realizes that a lot mm -hmm. of youth do go into care and mm -hmm. that there is a great need for foster parents. Um, some people know because they might work in the spectrum or they might <laughs> know people who know people. But yeah. a lot of people tell me that they don't realize that there is a great need for foster parents. And so you know, I know that's one of my missions is is trying to get that awareness out as much as possible. And I know that's a big uh, mission for you as well. Yeah, it definitely is. I think there's so many people who want to be involved. They want to help in ways that um, they can if they're able to open their hearts and homes, but they just don't necessarily know that that's something that they could do or that there's a need for. Yeah. And if they can't become a foster parent, what are the different ways that people can give back to their community? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many different ways. Um, you know, if you can't foster, you can always volunteer. You can be, um, if you can't foster full-time, you can also do respite care, kind of um, giving some relief to those full-time foster parents. You can volunteer with the MFS. Um, you can donate if that's something that you're able to do financially. Um, we have needs, our families have needs, you know, physical needs. If there's a kid who comes in and they don't have any clothes or they don't have, you know, school items, um, we always have needs like that. So you're always welcome to go to our website, umfs.org, and check out um, the needs that are posted there. Yeah, certainly. And now you're also taking classes, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. So after I finished my degree in um, psychology, I was really excited to start um, my degree in clinical mental health counseling. So I'm about a year and a little bit in now. Um, I really love the program. It's super exciting for me. And eventually I want to become a licensed professional counselor. Yeah. And when you started your school journey, did you mm -hmm. have a certain vision of where you would land in a career? And, and has that shifted at all over time? Um, I think originally I really, you know, just was thinking more just like kind of general counseling. Um, I was really interested in um, a trauma focus. I think, you know, that conversation is, um, especially within the mental health field, it's just um, come up a lot more. And I've learned a lot about trauma. And I, I think it's really important to talk about and to address um, from a clinical, cl excuse me, clinical perspective. Um, and since being with UMFS, I think what I really learned is, you know, my end goal is still to become a licensed professional counselor, but I've seen how mental health doesn't just affect, it's not just counseling, it's how we, you know, are interacting with people. It's, it's so much more holistic. And I think it's really cool to see how we're able to provide different types of treatments, different interventions, um, mentorship, things like that, that can all encompass mental health. And so those are the things that I've learned that I want to be able to integrate into my future practice. Yeah, yeah, of course. And now I'd love to talk about something that we've been, I guess, conjuring up for a while. That word always throws me for a little bit. But we've come up with a really great idea, um, you know, as you're managing the different social pages that we have. We have one for every region. Uh, UMFS has various regions that they serve, uh, but we are a statewide nonprofit. But we do have different pages for each region because each region is a little bit different. But we came up with something called Coffee Chats, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I'm yeah. super excited about it. Hopefully we'll get to kick it off um, this spring. Yeah, that's our goal. Um, we had to do a little bit of technical um, things to, to get it to, to work. But uh, what we want to do is have a Facebook Live. Uh, I've learned that there are a lot of questions about foster care out there. And people don't know where to find them. Or everybody has a different answer because every, you know, every organization, every agency, they work a little bit different. And so when people come to us, I often hear them, you know, as new foster parents say, oh, well, I didn't know I could do X, Y, Z, or I didn't know this would work, or, or can I foster, you know, I might be, you know, whatever myth it is. 
And we have to tell them that yes, they can or no, they can't or whatever the scenario is. And so Coffee Chats is, gives us that open environment to discuss things, to bring on different uh, directors or, you know, case workers to just get the word out about what we do. Yeah, yeah. I definitely just want people to know who we are as, as UMFS because, I mean, UMFS is an organization, but really it's the people, it's the staff members, it's the families who we work with and, and serve in this community. And so I think having a platform where we get to interact and have some fun, but also get to share and bring awareness and educate, um, talk to different um, staff members, like you said, mentioning directors even, or other TFC workers. I think it's just a fun way to engage with our community. And we hope people will hop on there and, and talk with us and ask questions and have a conversation um, and bring their coffee if, you know, drink coffee or tea um, and, and have a good time with us. Yeah. And it's going to be live. So that's going to be fun. And then it can stream from the various different pages uh, that UMFS um, has, which is really lovely. We're going to figure out all the technical things. <laughs> I know, I know we will for sure. But we're hoping to kick it off in May for anyone watching. Uh, we're hoping to kick it off in May, which is Foster Parent Appreciation Month. And it'll be a great way to spark some conversations for sure. Yeah, I'm excited for it. But one thing I'd love to do with you today, Katie, since we're both in similar roles, I'd love to do um, kind of a Q&A. Uh, where we just bounce off different myths that we often hear as recruiters. You know, foster parents, they make such a difference in the life of the youth of our community. Um, but there are so many myths that we hear. And so I'd love to just kind of debunk some of those um, and just kind of do a little Q&A if that's okay with you. Love it. Great idea. Okay, great. All right. So I'm going to start and then I'll let you answer. And then I'll chime okay. in um, and we can just kind of debunk them together if that works. That works. Okay. So the first one says, I can't be a foster parent because I am single. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> we do hear that a lot. Yeah. So actually we have a lot of families who are single. Like a lot of our parents are single um, and they foster and they create these awesome relationships with our kids. So that's definitely, you don't have to be um, in a married relationship. Um, you also can be living together with someone. You don't have to be married. Um, there are other requirements along with that, um, but you can be single. There's, um, it's not as, it's not like you have to be married. Yeah, that's just, that's not true. Yeah, and also, you know, being single, sometimes is a good thing. Um, you know, people often tell me, oh, well, it can't, they kind of come at it as an, in a negative, but um, sometimes youth can't be placed with two parents. And so having those single homes um, is nice to have in case the child cannot be placed with two parents. It gives them the opportunity to just be placed with one. Yeah, that's true. And even more like you as an individual, you have strengths um, just in yourself, you know, and we always look for that when we're, you know, interviewing families and talking with them and going through training, we're identifying what strengths you have. And then we're able to use that to create these awesome matches with the kids who are coming into our program. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And speaking of match too, that's also another thing that people often ask is, you know, do the kids just get placed in our home? Do we have a say? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so how it kind of works, you know, our goal is to create matches that are going to be the best for both our families, but serving the kids that we have and meeting their needs and really limiting disruptions. Um, so our intake workers, you know, they're awesome at what they do. Um, and when they get a referral, they look at um, the needs of that child and see what families we have that meet those needs. And we'll give you a call and say, hey, we have this referral. This is the information we have. Is, is this going to be a good match for you? And, you know, that goes back to you, whether you are able to accept that child into your home or not. Yeah. And the family has the right to say yes or no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, we're not forcing you to take a kid that you feel like isn't going to be a good match or if it's, you know, something is going on in your life personally that you need to say, hey, right now I need to um, put a pause on taking kids in my home because we want our families to be healthy so that they can create the best therapy relationships um, possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what about this one? I can't be a foster parent because I work full time. 
Yeah, a lot of our families work full time. I mean, people have to, you know, survive and live and make money um, in this world. So it's definitely not something that limits families. Um, one great thing about serving kids who are in the school age, they're at school for most of the day. And then there are lots of opportunities for after school childcare um, and things like that. Yeah, one thing we do ask, though, is that, you know, if you work full time, do you have flexibility? Because, you know, there might be court appearances or if the youth becomes sick, can you be able to take off time uh, to do the things that parents do? Yeah, exactly. And what about this? I can't be a foster parent because I am part of the LGBTQ community. No, we actually have families who are a part of the LGBTQ community, and it's actually a need that we have. You know, we have kids who are part of that community, and um, it's not it's not against rules. We actually want families who are from all different types of backgrounds because we have kids from different backgrounds, um, and we're able to create these awesome matches through that. And so, if you're interested and you are a part of that community, reach out. Like we, you know, we don't discriminate. Yeah, can't speak discriminate against anyone. We love creating diversity within our families. And we really want to promote that within UMFS. And this one is often a really big one, um, at least that I hear, is I was a foster child, so I cannot be a foster parent. Have you ever heard that? I, I don't know if I've heard it, but I can see, I can see someone saying that to me. Yeah. Um, honestly, a lot of people who I, I see kind of becoming foster parents with us have either been in the foster care system themselves or, you know, their families fostered while they were growing up, or they have a family member who's, they've interacted with the foster care system to some degree. Um, and I think it's so amazing when you see someone who's gone through it and they've come on the other side and they really want to be a person um, for a kid who's going through the same things that they were and walk alongside that journey together. So I'm like, if you've experienced that and, you know, you want to give back and you want to be able to be a person of support for someone who was like you as a kid, then please reach out. Yeah. It helps them feel like they're not alone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we want to make sure we're promoting that sense of being with someone who cares for you and is creating safety. Yeah. What about, I do not own a home, so I cannot be a foster parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's another one. You don't have to own a home. You can be renting. Um, you know, so it's something that people think, oh, I have to have a house. I have to have all this stuff. And really, you know, as long as you have space available. So we require that you have um, every child in your room has their own bedroom. So as long as you have the space um, required, then you are able to foster. You don't have to own your home. And speaking of the bedroom, what about um, can youth share a room with a child that's already in the home? Um, so we want kids to have their own space. Really, we want to have them to have a space that's theirs, um, that they can have, you know, time away if they need some privacy and things like that. Um, also for safety, you know, kids are coming from all different types of backgrounds. Um, so we want to make sure that they have their own space. Yeah, definitely. Their own safe space, you know, and then of course, if they, you know, grow and become friends with the youth that are already in the home, then of course they can share. But initially, they definitely need their own yeah. space. Exactly. What about I can't foster, I would get too attached? Yeah, I think this is one that I hear the most often, actually. Um, and I always say to families, if you think you're going to get too attached, then you're probably are the right type of family for us because <laughs> our kids really need attachment. Um, so it's like, oh, yes, come be a foster parent then if you think you're going to get too attached. Um, because, you know, attachment is the, the root of like all of our relationships, right? And kids who have experienced trauma, especially at a young age, have a lot of a hard time creating those attachments. Um, so having a family member or an adult who is going to be attached, who is going to be loving and caring and consistent, consistent and showing up for them um, in those hard times, just, you know, sitting with them, walking through life with them is what they really need. Um, and, you know, a lot of our families get to stay in touch with the kids who have come through their care. And, and you know, not, that's not always the case, but sometimes it is. And it's really cool to see how um, even being in the home for a little bit of time creates this lasting impact once they're um, like left the home. Yeah, one of our amazing foster moms here in Fredericksburg 
she still FaceTimes uh, a lot of the kids that come in. Uh, her kids that are there now get to visit with the kids that have come through the home. They celebrate birthdays together. So saying goodbye ne doesn't necessarily mean goodbye. Um, sometimes it's just yeah. see you later. Yeah, exactly. What about the whole adoption um, question? A lot of people ask me, uh, what is the percentage of youth that get adopted? Yeah, um, you know, I don't know the percentage right off the top of my head, but uh, a lot of our families are able to adopt the kids that are in their home if that's their goal to be adopted. Um, and the great thing about our families, you know, you're dually licensed for foster and adoption. So if a child is placed in your home and, you know, it, they just it's a great match and their goal becomes adoption, um, we're able to facilitate that adoption process. And then another question I often get is how expensive is it to adopt from foster care? Um, yeah, so I it's free, you know, it's <laughs> you, there's not an expense there. Um, and and so it's it's not as expensive as people think. Yeah. But of course, you know, we always go in with the mindset with our foster parents that you know, foster care is the whole goal is reunification uh, for the youth to go back home. But of course, sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, and so yeah. when we do find those great matches, uh, we do ask our families, you know, in the beginning, are you open to adopting? Are you not? Just so we know what type of youth to mm -hmm. put into their home um, and how the scenario mm -hmm. might play out in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Foster care is not the end goal. Like you said, it's reunification or finding that permanency with an adoptive home. Do you hear any other common myths that you would love to, to share with our listeners? Uh, I have to think what's a good one. Um, one thing people might not know is you do have to have a driver's license. Um, so a lot of our kids have visitations, they're going to appointments. Um, so you need to have a reliable source of transportation, you know, have your own car and not have points against your record. That's a really good point. Um, try to think of another one. Ooh, mm, I think I feel like you hit the main ones that I hear. Yeah, me too. One thing I wanted to um, mention is about military. Um, mm. You know, here in the Fredericksburg region, we have a lot of military um, around us, and so people often ask, you know, can I foster? Um, but, you know, my husband might be in the Army or the wife might be in the Marines or whatever have you. And so mm -hmm. can they do it? And so one thing I commonly will say is that you have to be in your home for a good two years, um, you know, so that the youth isn't, you know, placed and then displaced right away because you have to move. Of course, sometimes you can't predict all the moves of the military, but we do try our best uh, to have things be as smooth as possible. Yeah, that's a really great point. So if someone is thinking about becoming a foster parent, what would you mm -hmm. tell them? I would say do it first off. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> yay! <"Yeah, yeah." laughs> I always am, am so excited when someone's interested, no matter where they are in the journey, whether it's them being like, hey, I'm just kind of starting to get interested. I want to learn more. Or they're like, hey, I'm ready to start training tomorrow. Um, I'm always super excited because um, it's so important and there is such a need. Um, so if you're interested, just reach out. Um, you can go to our website at umfs.org. Um, there's a button that says foster. You can click on it and look at all the information that we have and reach out to us as recruiters. Um, we love to talk to families who are interested. Um, and after that, we'll reach out to you. We'll set up an inquiry call. Um, we'll give you the whole spiel. We'll tell you about UMFS. And we also want to get to know you. We want to hear what you're passionate about, what you do, what your life looks like, how you're going to be able to meet the needs of the ch children and teens that we're placing into your homes. So really, it's a conversation. Um, we want you to know that we're going to support you along the way, um, but also give you a clear idea of what our expectations are for our families. Yeah, every agency is different uh, and every family is different. And so we definitely try to get to know the family uh, in the beginning as much as possible. And of course, as they go through training uh, to make sure that we're the right fit for them and they're the right fit for us as well. Exactly. And you know, Katie, you mentioned in the beginning how you were looking for something that was kind of in the helping profession. Mm -hmm. Has there been a time where you've said to yourself, you know what, I'm really making a difference? Um, 
I think so. Yes, <laughs> I would say, yeah. Um, I think that this role can be hard because, you know, you're looking for people who to open their homes and, and making this big life decision. Um, and it's amazing when you're able to see someone start the process and walk through each of those steps with them and answer their questions and support them. Um, and I think for me, it's, it's really cool to see when they get approved and then there's a placement and you're like, wow, I was a part of that journey for them. And then even once they're, you know, approved, we continually get to support the families that we have and get to love on them and help them feel encouraged and um, help them as they're doing on the front line, serving these kids and creating these awesome relationships. So I, I do feel really honored and privileged to be a part of the process. Yeah, that's great. I was just about to ask you what keeps you coming back, but I think you just answered that one yeah. for me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And so one of the things we often say is that um, UMFS is made up of a bunch of unwavering champions, the yeah. youth, the, you know, the teenagers, the staff, mm -hmm. the families, our communities that we serve. We're all unwavering mm -hmm. champions in our own way. How do you, yeah. you view yourself as an unwavering champion? I think I view myself as an unwavering champion um, a lot through the connections that I've been able to build in this community, um, getting to have conversations and um, bring awareness. And I think there's a part of it that's just empowering people to take that next step. Um, and it's been really awesome to see, you know, when you start having these conversations with members of the community and people are excited, they want to get involved and they want to um, be able to support our organization and our families and our kids in any way that they can. And so um, I think it's it's been cool to be a champion through like advocating, um, even through our social media page, getting to educate people is a lot of what I get to do. And that's something I find really fun um, and I really enjoy it because I think education is, is just really powerful overall. Um, and like we just talked about all these myths, people don't know um, that they can foster. They, they think, oh, I can't do it because of this. And this, even though they really want to. And so kind of being able to have a voice in that um, makes me feel like a champion in this community. Yeah, definitely. You know, we often will tell ourselves no without even realizing it. Uh, and so it's really yeah. nice to be able to educate people to know that yeah. their no might not be no, um, at least not for us. Yeah, exactly. And we, I think the thing is, we really believe in our families too. We believe that they are going to be great families for these kids. And when we get to talk to them and see their strengths and um, really get to speak into that, it's it's super exciting to know that a family who we've talked to on the front end is going to get approved and create these amazing environments and these lasting relationships and this lasting impact for all the kids who are coming into our program. Yeah. And Katie, you are based in Lynchburg, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, good old Lynchburg. <laughs> um, but we've been an hour and a half of that. So I get to go out to um, Alta Vista, Appomattox, Bedford, um, all the areas in, in the surrounding. Yes, I'd love for you to share your email uh, for if anyone's yes. listening that might be in that region uh, and would like to become a foster mm -hmm. parent, they can reach out to you directly. For sure. So my email address is ksolvig, S-O-L-V-I-G, at umfs.org. Um, and you can also, like I said, go to our website, umfs.org, backslash, backslash foster, um, and click on that. There's a link there. Um, fill out an inquiry form. It'll go directly to me, and then I can reach out to you as well. Well, thank you, Katie. It's been so nice to have you on and so nice to play a little game with you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. Of course. This is Angela Rivers with Fredericksburg Mission. Of course, to learn more about becoming a foster parent, please visit www.umfs.org slash foster. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. I'm Angela Rivers with Fredericksburg Mission. Tune in at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen to your podcast. Join us again next week for our next episode. How do you shorten the time it takes to buy a car? Car buying just got easier. Pohanka365.com lets you complete as much or as little of the car buying process online. Pohanka365.com. Car buying simplified. Anytime, anywhere.